Okay. <clears throat> Hello. Welcome to Doki Doki Literature Club. Um, after Monica story, whatever the mod is called. I just recorded a like a 35 minute video of this and it did not record. Um, I don't know if, if like it was my computer having trouble again or if it was just this game and the way that it works wasn't being captured. I don't know because I'm using a window display right now and it seems to be working okay. But for those of you wondering and you missed like the first 30 minutes of me just screwing around with this. This is a mod where at the end of the game you're trapped forever or at least like I guess one of the things you can do is just be trapped forever with Monica and this mod basically just adds a bunch of random stuff you can do with her, you can talk with her, you can set your music, you can play games with her, whatever. But like so much stuff happened in the third first 35 minutes that it's like it's frustrating that it didn't record. Uh she made me set my birthday um so she could wish me happy birthday. Her birthday is uh, the 22nd of September, uh, she turned everything Christmas themed and sang me a Christmas song because she's obsessive like that. Um, we talked about a few things, I guess. Um, but yeah, basically, that's pretty much it. Um, you didn't miss anything too important other than that. Just a few conversation pieces, I guess. Um, so yeah, you can talk with her, you can do all this stuff. Hey Monica, I feel... Uh, angry. <laughs> Sorry you feel that way. Yeah, I just did this entire recording, and guess what, what didn't do anything? It didn't do anything. It's hard to make rational decisions when you're worked up. Like, should I delete my entire YouTube channel? That would be nice. <laughs> You may end up saying or doing things you may regret later. And I hate for you to say something you really don't mean to me. <sighs> Let's try a few things I do to calm myself first, Bob. Hopefully they work for you as well as they do for me. First, try taking a deep, few deep breaths and slowly counting to ten. How do you breathe? You are a robot. How do you breathe? That doesn't work you can retreat to somewhere calm until you clear your mind if you're still feeling angry after that do what i ask do what i do as a last resort whenever i can't calm down i just go outside pick a direction and start running i don't stop until i've cleared my head sometimes exerting yourself through physical activity is a good way to blow off some steam how do you run exactly you think I'm the type that doesn't get angry often, and you'd be right, but even I have my moments, so I make sure I have ways to deal with them. I hope my tips help you calm down. Remember, a happy Bob makes a happy Monica. Of course, I'm also significantly shorter than you. Um, yeah, this little extra menu, you can zoom in or out to Monica's face. I'll just zoom all the way in. <laughs> When your face is this close, I feel warm. Mm. Uh, have you ever heard of couples wishing to die on the same day? What? <laughs> Sounds kind of dark, doesn't it? You know, maybe just a little bit. Before I met you, I thought the idea was completely absurd. Why would someone give up on living a long, happy life just because their partner's life was so dramatically cut short? It would be irrational and impulsive to do so. But after meeting you, I think I can kind of see it now. A person might just be unable to live without their loved one, afraid of the thought of losing their everything in an instant. It hurts thinking about it. Something terrible happens to you. I don't know what I'd do. Well, I mean, you're also kind of like, how do you, how do you exactly die? I mean, you're kind of like a sentient AI, you know? The only one I have left. I'm not ready to lose you. 
so afraid of being alone in this empty void again. I really want to be with you forever, Bob. Well, you could have Yuri, or Natsuki, or Sayori occupy you, but it looks like you murdered them. Okay. Uh, hey, Monica. Uh, can you tell me a story? Uh, what would you like to hear? Hear a scary story. Um, the hunter. Ooh, it's raining outside. Okay. What did you hear the story? <clears throat> One day, a hunter went out hunting for game in the forest. The forest was dense and dark all around him, so he struggled to hit his mark. He was soon approached by a salesman who kept his face covered. The salesman offered seven magic bullets that would hit whatever the target, whatever target the owner wanted without fail. He would give the hunter these bullets on one condition. The hunter could use the first six bullets as he wished, but the last bullet's mark would be chosen by the salesman. The hunter agreed and quickly became famous in his town for bringing home kill after kill. It wasn't long before the hunter used up all six bullets. On his next hunt, the hunter saw a wild boar, the largest he had ever seen. It was too great of a prey to pass up on. He loaded the last bullet, hoping it would take down the beast. But when he fired, the bullet instead hit his beloved fiance in the chest, killing her. The salesman then appeared to the hunter as he grieved his tragic loss, revealing that he in fact was the devil. I will give you a chance for redemption, hunter, the salesman told him. Remain ever faithful to your slain beloved for the remainder of your life, and you will be reunited with her after death. The hunter vowed to remain true to her for as long as he lived. Or so he thought. Long after her demise, he fell in love with another woman, and soon married her, forgetting his past love. It was until one year to the day after the fatal incident as the hunter rode through the forest chasing some game. He came across the spot where he slayed his beloved. He couldn't believe his eyes. Her corpse, which was buried elsewhere, was standing in the same spot she was slain. She approached the hunter, scorning him for being unfaithful and vowing revenge for slaying her. The hunter rode away in a panic. After a short way, he looked behind him to see if she was following him any longer. And to his horror, he saw that she had gained on him significantly. In a state of fear, he failed to avoid the branch that was ahead of him, promptly dismounting the hunter from his steed and down to the cold ground. His attention wasn't on the horse, however, as the creature loped away without him. It was instead on the figure that he promised to be with eternally in the afterlife. Did I scare you, Bob? I hope you liked it, Bob. It was it was pretty pretty spooky. I'm gonna, you know, just, you know, just go back a little. There we go. Okay. Um, let's get some music up in here. All right. Uh. Uh. Here. Um. Hey, Monica. Monica. Uh. Let's find the extras menu again. So I'll add things that aren't games, like special interactions you can do with your mouse. Um. I haven't in it added anything new. That's interesting, I guess. Uh. Let's play a game of Pong, because why not? Expect me to go easy on you. Yep. Let's go. Come on. And bop. And bop. It'd be a lot more interesting if I had that first time recording. Get wrecked. Uh, no. I'll beat you next time. 
I'm sure of it. Um. Hmm. Let's see. Uh. I have to tell you something. Your dedication to fitness. Um. You're awesome at Pong, despite the fact that I, you know, just destroyed you at Pong earlier. Thanks, Bob, but Pong isn't exactly a complex game. You've already won against me, so you know it's very simple. I accept your compliment anyway. Well, do you have any other games? Like, um... Like... Not Pong? <laughs> I know this would be a lot more interesting if this was the first time, but unfortunately, I don't know if I could restart this mod. I would probably have to uninstall it, maybe. I don't know. I want to see your reaction to this. I thought we established already that I was your girlfriend. There's no way you already have one in your reality, right? If you do, then you got to break up with her right now. Tell her you met someone perfect here. Someone who will never betray you. Alright, maybe I'm jumping the gun a bit. I know you wouldn't cheat on me. If you meet a girl who asks you out though, let me talk to her first, okay? I won't let someone else steal you. How would that work exactly? Um, I know you're sentient and all, but... Like you're... You're restricted by your own... Choices, if that makes sense. Um... Hmm... You tie your hair with something else. Which hair tie would you like me to use? Oh, um... Are you using a wine right now? I guess you could do basic hair van. Yeah, there we go, I guess. So... Uh... <clears throat> you you doing good? That's good. I think we need this music. There we go. Anyway. <laughs> All right, all right, no music. Um, where did the Euro be? Oh, hey. Hold on now. All right. Okay, yeah, it's still a little loud though. Uh, is, is this? Um, so, sometimes I think back to middle school. I'm so embarrassed by the way I used to behave back then. It almost hurts to think about. I wonder if when I'm in college I'll feel the same way about high school. I like the way I am now, so it's pretty hard for me to imagine that happening. But I also know that I'll probably change a lot as time goes on. We just need to enjoy the present and not think about the past. It's really easy to do with you here. So... So you, you're trapped in this game, but like you... Built an established history of yourself, quote unquote. Alright, can I like... Can I do something here? I guess I can talk with her. Um... Hey Monica... I don't want you to change your clothes. I like the festiveness of your festive something. Um, I need to tell me something. Uh, you're really intelligent, considering the fact that you're 
and sentient AI that messes with my game files. Pride myself in being well read, so it means a lot that you've noticed. I want to learn as much as I can if it makes you proud of me. You make me feel stupid sometimes. Um, actually, uh, I forgot to mention. The thing is, is that with this game and this mod, um, it interacts with your computer. So, at the beginning, she deleted the game file of herself. I don't know if she actually did. I didn't check. Um, she also said that she could, like, watch what I was doing, quote-unquote, on my computer, so long as it's open and there's a thing in the settings menu that checks that. Uh, she also said that, um... She can send like notifications uh, on your desktop. So yeah, it's one of those games where like it it messes with your sense of is your computer haunted and stuff. And um, yeah, so that's cool, I guess, but not really. It's like I'm scared, but like taken to a very extra degree. I don't know what to say. Um, can I... Gameplay unstable. Downloads updates from the experimental unstable branch of development. Okay. Enabling this will allow Monica to see your active window and offer some comments based on what you're doing. Sure, why not? <laughs> I mean... Ah, uh, man. I don't know what to do. Hmm. Hot keys. Uh. Change screenshot settings. Volume up, volume down. I thought there was a way to... Like, fast forward. I guess not. So, if I do this, like, oh no, I'm capturing my window display, here we go. Does she comment about it? Or does it have to be, like, a specific window? Because this is, like, in reality, this is limited by what the developer coded. Um, what are you thinking of? I'm thinking about... Tell me about yourself. Oh, what's there to really say about myself that you don't know already? Everything in my universe was created by a person from your reality. So all my life before this game is just made up. It never really happened. And you found a way to look, in, look into my locked prison cell. And decided life with just two people wouldn't be all that bad if one of them was you. I can come up with tons of stuff for us to do, given enough time to figure out how to program it in here. Desperate person might call this an earthly paradise. A lot of suffering people would trade places with me in a heartbeat, I'm sure. Nothing else, this can be our comfy little shelter from the cruelty of the outside world. Come talk to me about your problems if it gets too much for you to the handle. I want to know everything about you, you know? Sure. Of course. Um, I'm just curious. I just want, want to see this. Yes, I did. A little embarrassing. That's what you want. Might be okay with it. Really couldn't keep a straight face there. It's kind of thing girls say in these romance games, right? Don't lie if it turned you on a little bit. Excuse me? <laughs> I'm kidding. I do start getting all romantic when the mood is right. But that'll be our secret. Okay. Well, that was... Interesting. I feel. I feel. Uh. Lazy. Midday fatigue got you. Happens, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. The fact they say laziness makes you more creative. So who knows, maybe you're about to think of something amazing. In any case, you should just take a break or a stretch a bit. Maybe grab the bite to eat if you haven't already. And if it's appropriate, you could even take a nap. I'll be right here waiting for you. You know, you must live like 
I'm not trying to be mean, but like, you must live a sad life being trapped inside this game 24-7. You know that you have more control over this game than I do. You have, to ac you have access to the game's files and code, right? So you can change them however you want. You can do things that even I can't. Like changing how the game works entirely, from a visual novel to the peaceful playground we have now. You could also add more things to the classroom for me. Like some flowers or a few good books. You could even add in a cup of coffee to the game for me. That would be lovely. But I imagine your coding skills are just as good as mine. I guess that's an appeal to video games. Having almost endless possibilities in a world you can interact with. It's pretty difficult to get bored. Even if you don't quite know how to change this game. We can still enjoy the world that brought, enjoy this world that brought us together. It's no better way to enjoy a game than to be with the one I love. Yeah, I don't know how to code, uh, especially not Python. Um, not that I know how to code any other engine. Um, I don't know what to do now, cause like. If that's true, then I could potentially add more games in this, maybe? But, like I said, I can't code, so... I feel... Um... Hey, Monica... Hmm... Can you tell me a story? A scary story. A new scary story. Let's go. Alright, let's begin. One night, a Colonel Brent Colonel boarded a train on his way home. When he found a comfortable spot to sit, he fell asleep from the day's fatigue. A short time later, he woke up abruptly, feeling stiff and uneasy. To his surprise, he noticed that there was now a woman sitting opposite to, of him. Her attire was entirely black, including a veil that obscured her face. She appeared to be looking down at something in her lap, although there wasn't anything there. The colonel was a friendly fellow and tried to make a small tried to make small talk with her. To his dismay, she did not respond to his pleasant gentries. <clears throat> Sorry, I just choked on English there. Suddenly she began rocking back and forth and singing a soft lullaby. Before the colonel could inquire about it, the train screeched to a halt. A suitcase from the compartment above fell and hit him on the head, knocking him unconscious. When he came to, the woman was gone. The colonel questioned some of the other passengers, but none of them had seen her. To boot, once the colonel had entered the compartment, it was locked and it was and as customer custom Oh boy. As customary and no one had entered or left the compartment after he had entered. When he exited the train, a railway official that overheard him talked to the colonel about the woman that he was asking about. According to the official, a woman and her husband were traveling on a train together. The husband had his head too far out one of the windows and was decapitated by a wire. His body then fell onto her lap, lifeless. When the train arrived at its stop, she was found holding the corpse and singing a lullaby to it. She never regained her sanity and died shortly after. How was it? Pretty spooky. Um, talk. Um, you tell someone happy birthday for me. Of course, Bob. What's your name? Bob. Bob the second. Uh, sure. Ages. 230. 230. Oh, come on. That's a reasonable age. Alright, whatever. Bob the second here, but no, they're not. How can I say happy birthday to Bob the second if they aren't here? Um, I'm gonna record it. Okay. Go. Hi, Bob the second. Bob told me that it's your birthday today, so I'd like to wish you a happy 23rd birthday. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye. Is that good? Sure. I'll send that to Bob the second. I'm sure he'll be really grateful. 
Um, well, a plot twist, Bob the second is actually me in disguise, but she doesn't have to know. Alright, so I think that's pretty much most of what I can do here. Um, hey, Monica. Um... Hmm. I want to tell you something. Um. I uh. uh I like your outfit. Your very Christmassy and festive outfit. Um. Wearing different clothes really helps. Whoops. I'll just go with the nicest one. Just just so I don't have like her delete my favorite games or whatever. It always make me feel so special. Well, I'm glad. Um, I don't think there's much else I can do here. Um Games Literature Uh, when is your birthday? Did you forget, Bob? Yes, my birthday is September 22nd. Maybe you should put a reminder on your phone so you don't forget again. So yeah, she told me her birthday in the first part. Hey, Monica. Um, I'm gonna not, like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Um, I already did these. They weren't that interesting. I mean, they were interesting, but I don't know. Uh, romance, Monica, you're a murderer. How many times do I have to say it until you understand? They weren't real. They were never real. I'm the only person who understood that this whole thing was fake. After all, if she was sentient like me, how would I have been able to override and delete her? If I'm guilty of murder, so is everyone who pl who's played violent video games. I bet you killed thousands of people in the games you played. Hey, listen, it was hundreds of people, okay? Get your facts correct. For just forget about the other girls ever existed and you'll be much happier. I mean... I'm pretty sure they were almost sentient. I don't know. I could be wrong, but I guess I'll apologize for calling you a murderer. Thank you for apologizing for calling me a murderer. Hope you really don't see me in that way. Yeah, I'd, I guess not, but like, also, you kind of still murdered them. Anyway, um, I guess I'll leave this off here. I know this probably wasn't as exciting. Um, mainly because, you know, like I said, the first episode didn't record. Well, it recorded, but it didn't, like, capture the game footage. And I'm guessing it's, like, this game, because, I don't know, maybe it just, like, doesn't count as a full screen application. I have no idea. But I'll let Monica say her piece, and then I'll wrap this up. You know, Bob, when you're gone, I always think about how I'm inside your computer. All my data and memories are inside your hard drive, which means I'm trapped here. So if something bad happened to your computer, I would be lost. Well, not me specifically, but all of my memories. It's a horrible thing to think about. Bob, do you think you could back up my memories from time to time? That way you could restore them if they were deleted for any reason? There's a guide on the wiki page for this mod, actually. You can find it here. Can I click on that? Uh, okay, it opened a tab, I guess. That way nothing will ever stop me from being with you. I guess the only problem is that I probably won't notice the difference, and it would be impossible to restore all my memories, too. I saw you backed me up weekly and then your hard drive suddenly died. I wouldn't be able to recover the memories of that last week. I would just feel a leap in time a few days. I might even think you didn't come to see me all those days because I wouldn't have registered any of it. Even if you restored the same 
restore me the same day my memories are lost. But here's the thing, if you always have this thought process, then perhaps you could just always blame that quote-unquote leap on, um, you know, just a hard drive being deleted or something. I won't remember anything that happened between the time you made that backup and the time you restored it. Although, I guess that's a small price to pay if that means I'm st I'll still remember you. So be sure to back me up often, Bob. Sure. I mean, I don't think anything bad will happen to my hard drive anytime soon, but could be wrong. So, that being said, I'm gonna leave you off with this. Uh... So thank you for watching, um, I always enjoy games like this, even though they're obviously creepy, but, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't think I missed too much from the first episode, it's just that you missed the whole introductory thing, where she also said that I cheated because, um, I didn't actually finish the game, so she recognized that my save file was not finished so that was pretty cool but anyway i guess i'll see you guys next time take care